All right, welcome to Closure Cones walkthrough number nine, runtime polymorphism. What is that? <laughs> okay, that one sounds a little bit scary. Let's just see what we get when we when we take a closer look. Runtime polymorphism. Mm-hmm. All right, once again, here we are in the light table, IDE. I'm gonna remove the call to the meditations function so we can just look at each one of these expressions individually. Um, okay, there's a bunch of stuff at the beginning. I don't know if we should take too close of a look at it just yet. Um, actually, I'm gonna move this down. This whole diet thing looks like it's not used until later. Like, okay, here's diet down here. Let's just move it down just to, just to simplify what we're looking at. Okay, so we've got this hello function defined at the beginning. And then we've got some tests here. Some functions can be used in different ways with no arguments. Aha, function with no arguments. So it's just executing the hello function. Now, hello, well, there it is with no arguments, but look at all these other things. It looks like it's defining different versions of hello for like different arguments. If you, you can call it with no arguments and you get this result, or you can call it with one argument A and you get this result, or A and more, hmm, and more. And I guess this is saying you've got an A plus you've got any number of other uh, more parameters and they're all gonna be grouped into the collection called more. Uh, and it will return this result. So there's three different cases. They're all returning a different result. Uh, so this very basic case here, when you call hello with no parameters, this one will be matched and hello world should be returned. Hello world, true. With one argument, hello world should return back. The world is one parameter here. So it should return back the string. Hello, you silly world period as a as a string so this str function is building a string from all the parameters let's see hello you silly let's get word of that and put in the parameter world that should be our result indeed or with many arguments so hello with three arguments past a and more it would return this one. Oh my, this is a complicated expression. We're gonna have to learn some, uh, something new here. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna return back the string. Um, hello to this group plus the result of this weird expression plus the exclamation point. So let's just type in what we had so far. Hello to this group plus something, plus an exclamation mark. So there's something here before the exclamation mark, and it's this function. Um, apply, hmm, okay, so I think the apply function takes a function as a parameter, and then takes a list of, uh, it takes a collection of arguments that should be passed as arguments to this function. So basically, instead of, instead of calling string with uh, some collection, one, two, three, um, we actually want one, two, and three to be three parameters to string. So see the difference uh, apply, uh, when you call string with these, uh, with a collection, you get back this kind of a string, right? It's like a, <laughs> a vector. But if we call apply, apply string, then it's going to be apply string is basically saying the same thing. It's 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 putting the collection directly as a parameter list. So one, two, three. See, those are the same. But sometimes you can't just specify one, two, three. You 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 have a collection that you that you need to apply the function to, and so that's where apply comes in handy. So let's see what's going on here. Apply string function to the result of this. Oh my gosh, another new thing, interpose, interpose. So 
maybe we can just look at the documentation real quick for interpose. You know, since I Im imported this closure REPL uh, namespace, doc is directly available here. So I will say doc interpose. Oh yeah, it prints it. That's gonna end up at the bottom. Okay, so interpose returns a lazy sequence of the elements of collection separated by sep. Okay, a sequence of the elements separated by sep. So it kind of inserts the, let's clean this up. It kind of inserts this separator in between all of the elements of the given collection or the given sequence. Oh boy, now what's our sequence? It's the concatenation of A and more. Okay, so A was the first parameter and more was the collection of the rest of the parameters. So this is simply putting them all back together in a collection. So concatenation uh, with this list and that list, you get back A and more, you get back all of the parameters all together. So interpose is gonna put a comma and a space between each of them. And then we're gonna convert that whole thing to a string. Okay, so I think what we'll get, we're passing the list Peter, Paul, Mary, and we're gonna interpose a comma in between each one of those and just treat it as a string here. So it should be Peter, comma, space, Paul, comma, space, Mary. Finally, got that one to pass. Okay, moving along. So what did we learn there real quick? We learned that uh, when you define a function, you can define um, the different different ways you want to be able to call that function with no parameters, with one parameter, with many parameters. So that's one way of dispatching uh, based on the number of parameters. Now, here's a totally different way. So closure supports multi-methods, and we're going to get a taste of them here. Multi-methods allow more complex dispatching. So whereas up above, it was dispatching just simply based on the number of arguments, we can dispatch on really anything. So, okay, let's see some examples. Bambi eats vegetables, that's our result. Okay, and it's a result of what? Calling the diet function with this big map? And that's it? So we call the diet function with a giant map and we get back Bambi eats vegetables. Uh, well, I guess it looks like maybe the function diet is pulling the name from the map and saying it eats, probably <laughs> it's an herbivore, so it's just returning veggies. So diet needs to be able to take a look at this map and return back this string, which is the result of pulling out the name key and the looking at the eater key. Hmm. Okay. So let's take a look here. We've got a def multi. We're defining a multi method called diet. And then what? What is this function here? Is this the actual function for diet? I think not. This is the dispatch function. So it's here it's just an anonymous function. It's a function of one parameter. And what does it return? It returns the result. Uh, it returns the, the value of the eater key. So it looks like X is expected to be a map. Um, not only that, it's a map that has an eater key. So, well, probably has an eater key for it to be useful. Then what? what, what why do you care about the result of the eater key? Well, that's the value that we use to decide which which version of this method we should be calling. So here's uh, def method again for diet, but what, there's this herbivore parameter. So herbivore is the result. If herbivore is the result of this dispatching function, then this is the method that matches and we should be calling uh, this, this version of the method. And um, similarly for carnivore or Oh, default. That looks like a custom one. So that will be um, the default one. If if it if the eater key has a value of herbivore uh, or carnivore, uh, these these will be 
If it's herbivore, this will be called. If it's carnivore, this will be called. But if it's anything else, default, then this will be called. So it looks like we've got to supply these different um, values here, different implementations. So let's do so. Bambi eats vegetables. So which version of diet are we calling? Well, it all depends on the eater key, right? The eater key of the map that you pass in. What is the eater key in this case? Well, look at that. The eater key is herbivore. So looks like this version of the diet will be matched. And what's our expression? It's, it's, it's simply returning a string, right? Like Bambi eats vegetables. So we need to say string something like some name here and then eats uh, something, right? We're getting there. <laughs> um, it looks like the name Bambi goes here, but where does Bambi come from? Bambi is the value of the name key. So the name of the given map, name of A, this should return Bambi. And then Bambi eats, eats what? Oh, you know, it's herbivore. We already know it's an herbivore, so we can say veggies, period, right? Oh gosh, that shouldn't be a map. That should just about do it. Name A. Okay, great. So we got this first one working. Now we've got uh, what different methods are used depending on the dispatch function result. Yes, we've kind of figured that out. Simba eats animals. Let me guess, this is a carnivore? Yes, the eater is carnivore. So which version of diet will match? The one with uh, where the eater is carnivore. And we're going to return back something very similar. Simba, the name of whatever uh, map, Simba eats. Well, this is a carnivore, so we can say animals. And good, we got that one to pass as well. Now, what have we got here? Rich Hickey. That's all that's in the map. So there's no eater in the map. So what happens? We end up using the default, the default uh, dispatch value. So I guess it's saying, I don't know what blank eats. And this is going to, we need to build a string build a string and here we need to put the name in name of a okay I don't know what rich hickey eats so there you go the diet function is now implemented for herbivores carnivores and anything else so that's a little bit um, that's a little bit of a different concept for many people uh, you might not have seen this before closure so it's a different way of thinking and you might find use for it uh, when you're designing your programs. So that was an interesting exercise. Uh, stay tuned. I'll see you again in the next closure walkthrough video.